welcome to our neighborhood, Etobicoke North. I'm Imani Wilby Taylor. And I'm Jesse Lane Capua. When we think of Etobicoke North, we think of that large community that stretches from 401 to Steeles. However, it is comprised of four diverse communities. Today, on the history of Etobicoke North, we'll be diving into these communities. Specifically Smithfield and Thistletown. Smithfield began in the 1830s as a service center for the surrounding farming community. Comprised of two blacksmiths, a tailor, a wagon maker, and two butchers. A post office was later opened on the northeast corner of the area, but was called Etobicoke because there was already a Smithfield post office in North Humberland County. Smithfield was a place of commerce. People would come to trade and sell their goods, purchase supplies, pick up mail, attend mass, go to school, and keep themselves updated with the latest news. In 1845, a primitive Methodist church was built out of logs. By 1886, the church upgraded from a log construction to a framed building. It was later moved to Albion Road and was veneered in bricks, where church managed to last until the 1960s. Starting in 1845, Children went to a school in the building that was being shared with Thistletown, but in 1874, students attended a new school located in Smithfield on George Ella's farm. After it closed as a school in 1954, students were sent off to a larger school located in Thistletown. The school served as a community center for the time being until it was burned down by a group of vandals in 1957. Although Smithfield School was gone, it was not destined to disappear. In 1966, a new Smithfield Middle School was opened at 175 Mount Olive Drive. The old 1874 school section stone is now on display in the new school foyer in commemoration of the previous school. Smithfield Middle School is a living testament to the days of yore. It reminds us of our roots, a much simpler time a symbol of our growth as a community. Smithfield played an important role in Northern Etobicoke history, but the Albion Grove Village subdivision was just as significant. Garfella Drive was named after Garfield Ello, whose farm was subdivided to create the Albion Grove Village subdivision. This was an all-electric subdivision. Albion Grove Village, as it was once called, was famous for being the largest all-electric community in Toronto at that time. It was truly a marvel of technological advancement. The entire community was comprised of homes that were all-electric. The use of all electric homes not only shows the growth of Toronto in the early days, but the growing influence of electricity throughout the world. Moving further down, we arrive at the Martin Grove and Finch intersection. This area has a rich and glorious history. Around this area, lies one of the Brexdale's prominent Catholic secondary schools, Father Henry Carr. It was originally at Panorama Court, but has now moved here to 1760 Wine Grove Road. The previous Carr building is now formally called the Rexdale Community Hub, serving as a community center for those in the neighborhood. Close by the Rexdale Community Hub lies the now inactive Thistletown Regional Center for Children. Here, children and adolescents were offered various kinds of physical, mental, and emotional aid. 
This hospital's history began in 1927 as a county branch for the Hospital of Sick Children. In 1921, the Hospital of Sick Children in downtown Toronto were discussing whether or not to build a new county hospital to replace the lakeside home for children in Hanlands Point. The building was not easily accessible as it was only available for four months in a year. It was also challenging for staff and patients to reach the facility due to its island location. The hospital initiated a two-year search for a prime location to build a new facility. In 1925, they located an 80-acre farmland owned by Francis and Arbella Kingdon and purchased the property. The site was self-sufficient having its own steam plant, water filtration system, and sewage disposal system. In 1957, the property was sold to the Ontario government to become an Ontario hospital for children. With the growth of medical technology, including antibiotics, vaccines, and advanced surgical techniques, the needs for this type of hospital diminished over time. The hospital continued to offer its services until it was shut down in March 19, 2012, and now serves as a beautiful park open to all those within the community. The Smithfield community is a rich and vibrant neighborhood. Coming up next, we will dive into the history of the historical Thistletown neighborhood. Here on our neighborhood, History of a Topical North. Welcome back to our neighborhood, the history of a Topical North. We'll be exploring Thistletown through its immersive history. Let us take a walk back to the past of Thistletown. Our journey will start off at the neighborhood formerly known as Kunet's Corner. The Kunets were the first settlers to arrive over 200 years ago. They founded Kunets Corner, which is now known today as the intersection of Albion and Islington. It originated in the early 1800s after the Kunet family settled into the area. One of Thistletown's earliest settlers was the Muson family, which consisted of George Muson, his wife, and his three sons. They came to Canada from London in 1820. The bridge, Mousson's Bridge, was named after Thomas Mousson, who played a big part in creating the plank roads that connect Thistletown to other places like Clareville and Smithfield, and the bridge linked to the Mousson's land, business, and church. The bridge was built around 1835. The next major landowner to move into the area was John Grubb, his wife Janet Grubb, and his nine kids. John Grubb brought his family with him to Canada in 1831 after the Great Depression hit Scotland. John brought 150 acres of farmland around the West Humber River, just south of what is today the Albion and Islington intersection. They named their farm Elmbank. In 1834, John Grubb built a second house made of river stone about 6 meters to the south, which is known today as 19 Jason Road. John, both a businessman and a farmer, saw what he wished to be a thriving community, and so, with the help of others, organized the Plank Road Association. The Plank Road Association was established in 1841 for the construction of the Western Plank Road and came together again in 1846 for the construction of the Albion Plank Road. The Plank Road Association was created for the pioneers because they were tired of getting stuck in the mud, especially when they were traveling with loads of grain. The road was made by laying pine planks on top of stringers of timber and was fastened with oak pegs. They finished making the road by giving it a coating of earth to cover the planks and to ensure quiet and easy travel. In September 1841, Thomas Mousson, along with John Grubb, helped establish the Weston Plank Road Company, 
which led the Plank Road from Dundas Street to Moussons Bridge. The Albion Plank Road Company was established on May 18, 1846. People such as John Grove and Thomas Mousson again helped establish this company. The plan for this road was to operate a tall road from Moussons Bridge through St. Andrews, Smithfield, Clareville, and onto Geed's Corner. When the road was completed, it stretched 18 miles from Weston Road to Bolton, and it required 2 million and a quarter feet of pine plank. In October 1847, John Grubb registered a plan for the village of St. Andrews, breaking the land into small village lots. However, there was a problem with their town name. The mail was often mistakenly going to St. Andrews in New Brunswick. They decided to change the name of the village after the highly respected Dr. Thistle, thus creating the name Thistletown. Hope you're enjoying the show. Stay tuned for more history about Thistletown after this commercial break. Welcome back to the show. Let us continue our journey along the path of the history of Thistletown. In 1832, Aaron Barker, his wife, and six daughters came to Canada from England. In 1841, Aaron bought a Thistletown farm and today is the location of Thistletown Collegiate. John Barker, Aaron's grandson, bought farmland from the Grubb family and today is where roads such as Riverdale Avenue are located. The Franklin Carmichael Art Group was founded by Dr. Anne Curtin in 1952. Dr. Anne Curtin moved to Thistletown in 1932, building her log house on two and a half acres of land. It was then in 1952 where she gathered aspiring interested artists in the community, who she then formed a group with. Since Dr. Anne Curtin and the widow of Franklin Carmichael were good friends, they named the group the Franklin Carmichael Art Group. Mrs. Carmichael usually attended exhibitions done by the community group and would donate her late husband's artwork for student awards. During her life, Dr. Curtin worked hard to set up an art center in her community. Today, Thistletown is not only a historical rich place, but it is also very multicultural. You can see this in the shopping district with a wide variety of shops. The culturally diverse community consists of Asian, Middle Eastern, East and West Indian, and African shops and restaurants. Around the area of Thistletown, there are parklands, located at the joint of the three major tributaries of the Humber River, the West Humber River, North Humber River, and Emery Creek. The property was once part of John Grubb's farmland. Some of the buildings and houses are still standing today, like John Grubb's Riverstone House. The Franklin Carmichael Art Center is now a gallery and a center for people of all ages to create art and have fun. This is Thistletown, a multicultural town where the past connects with the present. That's it for our show. Thank you for watching our segment, Our Neighborhood, The History of Etobicoke North. I'm Imani Wilby Taylor. And I'm Jesse Lane Capital. See you soon.